right guys, work continues on the twin turbo 4200 power Datsun, but today we are going to talk about the fuel system. So we are doing something that uh, is a little bit new to us, and that is we are going to be running methanol. Now, I want to say right off the bat, most of this information comes from talking to other people at the track and research that I have done. So take it with a grain of salt. So running methanol is definitely a situation of there's a lot of benefits and there's a lot of deficits. By running methanol, it usually results in a overall lighter vehicle. And everybody knows if you have less mass, that means it takes less horsepower to go fast. The reason that there is less weight is because you can usually get away without running an intercooler on the car. And that's simply because the fuel is your intercooler. As you inject fuel, any fuel, it goes through a state change. Basically, it goes from a liquid state to a gas state. And if you don't know, that state change is a endothermic reaction, and that means that it removes heat from the system. To give an example of what I mean by this, if you've ever gone into a swimming pool and you climb out of the swimming pool, as the water that is on your skin evaporates, it actually takes heat from your skin and puts it into the liquid and that's what actually causes the liquid to vaporize. Now, the reason that you can't get away with running no intercooler with other fuels is because one, you're not injecting as much of it, and two, there is something called the latent heat of vaporization, meaning that is how much temperature it takes out per given mass or something like that, and methanol is higher than others. Additionally, the combustion temps of methanol are much lower than that of ethanol or gasoline, and therefore, it puts a whole lot less stress on your cooling system. In fact, some people don't even run a uh, cooling system on their engine when they're running methanol. That means you eliminate the need for a radiator, and that is even more weight that you can take off the car. In our case, we are keeping the cooling system because of one of the disadvantages of methanol, which I'll get to later. Another major advantage to methanol is it actually contains oxygen in the fuel. This means that the fuel inherently creates more torque because there is more oxygen present. It's kind of like a liquid supercharger, and it doesn't really amount to a crazy amount, but every little bit counts. One other major advantage that I'm gonna go over is the tuning window for methanol is much greater than that of other fuels, meaning the air to fuel ratio that is safe for the engine is a much wider range than that of other fuels. So since your tuning window is much larger, uh, what a lot of guys actually do is they try to get as much fuel into the engine and as long as you have enough ignition system to light it off, some will argue it actually makes more power that way. Now let's move on to the disadvantages. So there's quite a few disadvantages to running methanol, and the first one we're gonna start out with is milking the oil. Oftentimes with a methanol powered car, you need to do more frequent oil changes. Basically, since you're running so much more fuel volume into the engine, a lot more of that fuel is going to get into the combustion chamber in a liquid form and make its way past the rings that fuel actually a lot of times holds water. Methanol and water don't really do a good job of lubricating your engine, so you need to get that out so that you don't have issues. 20 to 25% of the stuff that's going into the cylinder is fuel. It is totally normal for uh, there to be a certain amount of blow-by on an engine, and that means, given that just more of the stuff that's in there is fuel, more fuel is gonna make it past the rings. So what we're going to do to mitigate this problem is we are going to run two different fuel types. As you saw in the previous episode, we welded a secondary injector bung rail 
into our intake here and we are still going to use the primary injector rail that is already in the cylinder head. Methanol boils off at about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That primary injector rail will be spraying uh, ethanol into the car. And the goal with spraying the ethanol in is to try to get some oil temperature into the engine and therefore bake off any methanol that may have made it past the rings. Additionally, to help reduce milking the oil, we are going to be running injectors that do a good job at atomizing the fuel. The next disadvantage of running methanol is it just gets a bunch of crap into your fuel system. What I mean by this is it is actually physically corrosive to aluminum. Also, methanol causes uh, rubber fuel lines to break down as well, and that can result in garbage getting into your fuel system as well. To mitigate that on this car, what we are going to do is we are going to be running a stainless steel fuel rail. Also, our injectors will have stainless steel components in it, so there's no chance of those breaking down. We will be running PTFE fuel lines. Another solution to this problem is the addition of something called top lube to your fuel. It is basically a uh, fuel additive. When you add it to your fuel, it makes it less prone to reacting with your fuel system components. A lot of forms of racings actually outlaw the use of this, which I think is just dumb. But in our case, it is legal, so we will be running that. Now, getting garbage in your fuel system is particularly bad for people that are running injectors that are better at atomizing fuel. If you think about what you're trying to do when you are atomizing fuel, you're sending it through a bunch of really small holes which get it to turn into a fine mist and those little tiny holes can easily be clogged up and then you're in trouble. Hence the reason why some guys just go with a fire hose of a fuel injector and they deal with the problem that way. Additionally, methanol is something that is called hygroscopic, meaning it takes moisture from the air and absorbs it into the fuel. That water that is now in your fuel can cause issues with the steel components in your fuel and cause them to corrode and plug up stuff. So in order to mitigate the hygroscopic, component, we will be putting a valve on our vent to the fuel line and making sure that it, the whole system stays good and sealed so that when the car is not being raced, we will close that vent and not allow the air to make it into the fuel cell and cause it to absorb moisture. The last disadvantage is the cost. Now, the fuel itself is usually a little bit cheaper than your typical race gas, but the problem is the components allowing you to run it in the car are usually much more expensive. For example, larger injectors are much more expensive. Even the fire hose injectors are rather expensive. Additionally, you need to run a better O2 sensor in your system. A lot of the Bosch O2 sensor styles do not hold up to the methanol in the exhaust gas. So you need to go with a uh, higher grade NTK style sensor. Um, a lot of people say you need the uh, lab grade sensor, which that's even more expensive than the regular sensor. In our case on this vehicle, we are going with Bosch 210 pound injectors from Snake Eater Performance. For the O2 sensor, we are using a Ballinger Motorsports O2 sensor controller. All right, so that pretty much wraps up our video on running methanol on your car. Just to summarize the entire video, the advantages of methanol is it results in a lighter vehicle and makes more horsepower. The disadvantages to running methanol are it oftentimes will milk the oil, meaning you need to change the oil more often. It's more prone to getting garbage into your fuel system, which can plug up injectors or get them to stick open. And it costs quite a bit more to run methanol than it does to run a comparable intercooler setup.
I'm really looking forward to getting this car running, but to see that, you guys are gonna have to wait for future episodes. So make sure that you like and subscribe, maybe leave a comment down below if you think I missed something. Consider becoming a channel member by hitting the join button down below. I'm really excited about this one. We'll see you in the next one, guys.